good to be here today, to be in the house of the Lord one more time, to be able to see each other's faces, and to be able to worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. So after worship today, we are going to um, have our um, lunch, and then we're going to we're gonna have a cake contest, so... I've seen some cakes back there looking good, so um, lucky judges. I don't know who you are, I don't know who one is, but yeah, this is going to be great, so so thankful for that. Um, the United Women in Faith will meet Thursday, this Thursday at 4 p.m., and Julie Reed is going to provide the refreshments and lead us in uh, the Call to Prayer program. The United uh, Women of Faith of an Annual Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper is February 21st from 4.30 to 6. Come and eat pancakes with all the fixings, bacon and sausage and have a good time. Mardi Gras style. So that, that sounds good. Sounds good. We will have an Ash Wednesday service on February 22nd at 5 p.m. with the imposition of ashes from last year's palm branches. Uh, it's a very meaningful start to the Lent season, so if your family would like to participate um, in coins for Lent, take a calendar uh, that will be beside the bulletins and begin collecting coins on Ash Wednesday, February 27th. Then donate the coins on Easter. It has been suggested that we donate all money collected to UMCOR for earthquake aid relief in Turkey and Syria. So a bank will be provided for your coin. So we ask that you do that. Now, the purpose of Shrove Tuesday is to um, eat all you can and enjoy <laughs> yourself all you can because fasting and things like that, somberness starts on Ash Wednesday. But I, 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 I've, I've heard and I know it can't possibly be true that there are a lot more people uh, at the Shrove Tuesday Pancake Service, if that's what you want to call it, than there are for Ash Wednesday, uh, which means that if you uh, love pancakes more than you love coming on Ash Wednesday, you need to come so I can put that cross on your head. So, <laughs> but I, I really, I just would like for you to come to Ash Wednesday. Uh, it does mean something very meaningful, and so we would like for you to come out uh, on Ash Wednesday night to, to receive the imposition of uh, the ashes. Again, if you need a statement of contribution, then let Valerie know, and she'll provide you one. Um, let's see. The flowers on the altar are provided by Tammy Taliento. And if your birthday is this week, let us know. Um, because we have none on record. And happy anniversary to Pat and Eleanor um, on February 17th. So um, I guess they're they're out honeymoon. maybe. They're honeymoon. Huh? They're honeymoon. They're honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So anyway. Um we have some prayer cards with prayer requests. So if you need one, uh, raise your hand and uh, Bobby uh, and Julie will come and give you one. Um, it says, you know, please pray for whatever the situation. Uh, if you want to put any additional details on there, you can. Let me know if you want this to be announced to the congregation. There's a yes or no. Uh, and if you don't, that's fine. Uh, and you can put your name optional. But I will receive these. And uh, in confidentiality, don't, don't worry about the confidentiality. If, uh, uh, because I'm going to get them and I'm going to pray for them. Pray over them during the week also. So uh, just be comfortable if you need to... Um, put any details on here that uh, is confidential. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yes. If you want it to be in the um, prayer request today, if you raise your hand, we'll bring you a card, and then during the first song, 
We'll walk through and pick them up. Mm -hmm. And so you just look for whoever is the usher back. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. We appreciate that. So if you need one, you can uh, lift your hands. All right. I think that is all. Um, these were on my desk. Does anybody know? Oh, I found them. I found them. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you did you want them to be? Okay. okay. I, I like I like them though. We'll we'll put them out there if people want to get them. Okay, because they've got um, the meaning of Lent and everything, and uh, something about Valentine's Day. All right then. <laughs>
page 814, Psalms 95, verses 1 through 5, response 2. Uh, please stand. <laughs>
our glory sightings, and uh, I want to thank uh, Jim Organg for, I found a little handle up here now that it makes it easier for me to step up here. Uh, so I thank you for doing that. Uh, so uh, it's, it's always a blessing when we have people who uh, are willing to share their gifts. So I am so thankful for that. Um, a gl um, hmm. Glory sighting uh, for uh, this week, uh, for me, it's just been to, to see how uh, God has moved, um, how many lives that uh, Teresa touched, just so many people uh, that, was there, that were there to give witness to who she was and um, how much she loved Christ. So that was definitely a glory sighting. Uh, for this week. So, uh -huh. and Erin? Um, I was just going to add to that, that, that the support of this church has been some of the best support I've received losing my grandmother. Um, and then my bridal shower was that has been wonderful. Just a, a wonderful family inside of the ship. All right. Amen. Amen. We're so thankful to you all. Does anybody else have any glory sightings or? Um, yes, uh-huh. I, I got my green belt. Say what? I got my green belt. His neon green belt in karate. He moved up a level in karate. Oh, okay. He's, he's a neon green belt. Neon green belt. All right. Oh, my goodness. I I'm going to have to hire you for my bodyguard. <laughs> I, I have to earn them now. He has to earn them. So he has to take tests and pass tests before he can get his new belts now. Oh, so this okay. one, he like he really earned and did work hard for. Us. All right, wonderful. So proud of you, William. That's great. Yes. Uh -huh. I, have a, I have an employee whose um, stepson walked out of the woods and lived there for twenty years, and she oh, kept having him in her house for a year and got him a driver's license, a social security and disability. don't mind being announced. Tammy uh, Taliento is going to have surgery um, tomorrow, Monday. Uh, so we want to lift her up in prayer. And then uh, this is Tommy and Patrice Winters. Um, and they're moving to Texas next weekend. So uh, we want to keep them in prayer. Uh, and we want to pray for Doc, Doc Greer. Um, so make sure that you keep her in our prayers also. <coughs> and, uh -huh, yes, Jim. I have something that God just kind of showed me in this recent uh, changes. Um, we had to start going back into the office at work. And of course I was like, ah, I don't want to have to do that. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, the whole time during COVID, I maybe saw my stepdad like once every two, three, four months, mm -hmm. because we just didn't get out, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, with us going back, I called him, and we used to go to lunch every Friday. Mm -hmm. And so I called him and said, hey, you know what? I'm driving back to work. We can go to lunch every Friday again. All right. And he was excited. He was like, yay, I can't wait. And so awesome. I get to see him every week again. Uh -huh. so, Sometimes things we're not looking forward to end up being a blessing anyway. Wonderful, wonderful. Anyone? Uh -huh. Joy, too, that, uh, you know, Melissa and Drew and Sam were looking for a home for him. It worked out where they can help a friend and they can help her. And it's right across from her church. Oh, right. A friend of hers whose mom had passed away. Her dad is remarried and he's moving out. Uh -huh. So she has the house to herself. So they're going to share the home. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray for your pastor again. Uh, I have um, 
cellulitis has come back. If it ever, I, I thought it went away, I really did. Uh, but it's back and it's back with a vengeance. So I'm in pain this morning, but um, it's, shall I read? Your dream, let me just say this, cause I'm not gonna tell what it is. Transformation, that's it, transformation. That's what it just, just came to me. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Uh, okay. Any, anyone else? Pray for the people in Turkey. Oh, yes. The people in Turkey and Syria. Yes. Yes. That it's, it's amazing. Even in disaster, how God works, that they're still uh, pulling babies and, and families out from under all that rubble. So it is just, God is just awesome. Awesome. All right. Then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're so thankful to you. We just, um, you're so amazing. Sometimes we just don't even know how to express it. The way you work in us and, and through us, Lord, we, we, we just can't thank you enough. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will continue to pour your blessings out upon us. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, for healing for all those who are sick. I pray for comfort for all those who need the comfort. And uh, I pray, dear Lord, for um, those who are bound, who are addicted, and who are abused, and uh, those people, dear Lord, that do not know you yet. And I just pray, dear Lord, that uh, you would manifest yourself to them. I know you will manifest your, your healing, and I, I know that you will manifest your comfort, and I know that you will manifest yourself, dear Lord, uh, to them so that they can be clear about who you are. Dear Lord, I, I thank you for confirmations that you give just out of the blue. I'm so thankful to you, dear Lord, and I believe you. I believe you, Lord, and uh, as I was saying this morning, Lord, I pray for each one of us that we all will seek, uh, seek who you want us to be and that once you tell us, dear Lord, that we will agree with what you say, Lord, because you are righteous and you are holy and you are perfect, dear Lord. So we just bask in that and we just thank you for all of the love that you give, all of the names that we called out, dear Lord, who need prayer. Uh, we know you're going to answer, you're going to heal people uh, during surgeries, and you're going to heal through medication, and you're going to heal, dear Lord. It's only you can heal that you are uh, going to give comfort, that you're going to help people uh, transition from one place to the other. We thank you, dear Lord, and I, I just feel like there's a sermon in that walking out of the woods thing, dear Lord, and so uh, continue to talk to me, speak to me, Lord, about that. But you are just, you just do things that amaze our minds, and so we just want to thank you for that. Lord, there's trouble all around us. There are earthquakes, and there are fires, and there are floods, and there are things in the sky that don't need to be there. And there are all kinds of things, dear Lord, that we don't understand and that we can't even uh, connect our minds to. But this one thing we know, we know who you are, and we know that you are above everything. We know, dear Lord, that you will protect us. We know, dear Lord, that you will open up our eyes so that we may see the truth in, in everything. And so we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you. And Lord, I ask you to bless young families who are raising their children. Bless our children and teenagers, dear Lord, as they are, are growing in you. And dear Lord, take care of us who are kind of in the middle, Lord. We're, we're taking, looking after parents and uh, grandchildren, sometimes great-grandchildren. And then, dear Lord, we thank you for the wisdom that you've given uh, those of us who are our senior, dear Lord. And uh, you're not through with them yet, dear Lord. You uh, still have gifts for them and, uh, and accomplishments for them to make in you. Lord, send us a revival and let it begin with us. As, as the song says, send us a revival, dear Lord, to, to wake us up and to put us on alert and so that uh, we may be powerful in the ministry that you have given to us. So Lord, I know that there are also things that we can't speak aloud that we need you for. 
And so right now, Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you will, um, that we will lift those things up to you in our hearts. And we know that you will hear and answer. And right now, we're going to lift those things up to you. Time for the children's time. The children again, Frank, uh, with Julie Reed. You might say it with a card. I like this one because it has a slock on it. Or you might say it with chocolate. I like that way too. Jesus has a lot to say about love. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. He also said to love your neighbor. I think what Jesus is saying was that we have to do more than just say we love. We have to do what? Show our love. Do it. That's right. We have to show our love. When we show our love, we take care of each other. When we provide food to people who do not have any, we show our love. When we pray with someone, we show our love. When we visit someone who's sick, we show our love. That is what Jesus meant by loving our neighbor. Okay? And we have a prayer, and when you're finished with your prayer, I have a little Valentine gift that says how much Jesus loves you. And it says it with a card, but also in chocolate. Okay. All right, can we say a prayer? Dear Jesus, we love you. Help us to show that love by doing what you have told us to do. Doing what you have told us to do. Amen. Amen.
time for our uh, giving God our gifts. The uh, ushers come forward. to give back to you the joy and the hearts. And so we pray that you take these tithes, offerings, and gifts and sanctify them, consecrate them, and use them to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. History Month because I really like when this month comes around because it, it's like we can acknowledge all of our black artists, black music producers, our authors, all of them, and it's just my favorite time of the year. So I chose this song from a very popular movie right now, Black Panther, and it's called Lift Me Up by Rihanna. And I found it very spiritual and moving, and I hope y'all enjoy. Yeah. 
verses 1 through 4, page 138 on your, in your, uh, in your, your Bible, your pew Bible, sorry. Saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, so he did not go, as at other times, to look for omens, but set his face toward the wilderness. Balaam looked up and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of the one who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down but with eyes uncovered. How fair are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel. Like palm groves that stretch far away, like gardens beside a river, like aloe, aloes the Lord has planted, like cedar, tree, cedar trees beside the waters. And we're going too far. I have. I don't think you could go too far. <laughs> The New Testament lesson is John 4, verses 1 through 11. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard of Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had gone through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sachar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried, tried out by his journey, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me? A woman of Samaria. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? This is the word of God for the people of God. come to another preaching moment and we thank you and we praise you for who you are. We praise you, dear Lord, for your word. We ask that you will open our ears so that we may hear, open our eyes so that we can truly see. And Lord, we know that your word never returns to you void. There is always a blessing and it accomplishes what uh, it is sent for. Uh, so we ask, dear Lord, that salvation, reconciliation, restoration, all good things will happen today, not because of Rose and what she says, but because of who you are and your word. So we thank you and we praise you. And I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, for you truly are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. And so the our, our scripture today, well, our, our scripture today, it is our scripture, but our lesson today and the sermon for day for today is uh, looking without seeing, looking without seeing. That sounds kind of strange. Sounds almost like an oxymoron, I guess. No, it's not an oxymoron. But anyway, how can you? You may ask the question: How can you look and not see? Well, actually, we can, <clears throat> because we're always looking on the surface of things. And our brains, for some reason, seem to be uh, tuned to uh, what we expect to see. And so sometimes if we're not looking uh, 
for truth or if we're not looking for um, something new, if we're not looking for unexpected blessings or unexpected revelation, uh, sometimes we don't truly see what it is that God has for us to see. And so uh, we have a familiar story here in the woman uh, at the well, the Samaritan woman. And at the beginning of the scripture, it is pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty, well, it just comes out and says it. It says that in, in, in most versions, it says that Jesus needed to go to Samaria. Now, this is real interesting because um, Samaritans and Jews did not get along with one another at all. As a matter of fact, most Jewish people thought that the Samaritans were um, unclean. They didn't exactly believe the same things, even though, now these are people that came, they have ancestors in common, and yet because of um, uh, being moved to another place, separated and growing up in another environment, um, they somehow became enemies. But they're family but they're enemies. And so for Jesus, good Jewish rabbi, to need to go through Samaria is something that we need to see right there. We look at it, but how many times do we, do we skip over that part? That part doesn't register with us that Jesus needed to go to Samaria, go through Samaria. And so as he, uh, they went, and he comes into contact with a woman who is at the well getting water at noonday in the heat. Now that was very unusual because the women came out in the evening to get their water supply and uh, what they needed. So why is this woman hanging out in the hot noonday sun? Well, one reason is because she didn't want to be seen. Or rather, let me say, she didn't want to be looked at by the other women who came in the evening, which was the smart thing to do. Because when she came into contact with those other women, she was being looked at, but in looking at her, they were judging her for what they thought they knew about her. And some of it was true, which she is going to confess to Jesus in a moment. But they only saw the surface. They only saw the immediate circumstances. So they were looking at this woman, and yet they were not really seeing her. How many times do we look at people and we see that they're dressed nicely. We see that they are uh, attractive. We even see if we think we're, they're unattractive. But we look <coughs> and never see what's on the inside, who they really are, what it is that they really want to accomplish, what it is that, um, uh, how they can how they can be a benefit to that person that they're looking at and judging, but not really seeing. And so Jesus asked her for water. Well, that was something else that was very unusual in this story. And there are many things that are unusual that are not traditional. And so a man, especially a Jewish rabbi, wouldn't be talking to a woman in public not even to ask for water from this well that she's at. And so I think sometimes that there are so many things entwined in scripture that um, we, we feel one way about, but it's, it's really significant. She's at a well. And again, that wasn't unusual, but it was unusual at that time of day. But I also think it has symbolic uh, uh, merit to it. 
because symbolism is my life as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, uh, as someone who has written things that have been published, published with the Methodist publishing house, symbolism is kind of my life. So maybe I see a little more of it than somebody else would, but she is at a well where there's water down deep and you got to dig deep with a bucket or whatever to be able to retrieve this water that would be nourishing, that would be refreshing. So here's this woman who we're gonna find out is really empty on the inside. Here is this well that is so deep and yet Jesus asked this empty woman to go down and get something in this uh, from this well and she don't understand. And so she says, you, you, don't, you don't even have, I can't, first of all, I can't believe you're talking to me. And then the next thing is, you, you don't have anything to draw with. That's in her mind, in her thinking, because she's looking, but not seeing. She's looking at Jesus, this man, this rabbi that really doesn't mean anything to her, but uh, she is looking and she sees that there's no physical way for him to get the water. And so, you know, she's looking but not seeing. Jesus, however, is looking and he's seeing. We find ourselves in circumstances because our world is so visual and with all of the social media and everything out there, we, we see a lot, we hear a lot, uh, and we're not careful. Our children and grandchildren will end up seeing things that they shouldn't be seeing uh, at such a young age. And so we're inundated with all of this information and things to see, but we're, we're looking at it, but we're not really seeing. Sometimes we have to see behind what's going on. Sometimes we have to see the circumstances surrounding what's going on. And it will reveal some truth to us that uh, if we're just looking, we'll, we'll never get. And so Jesus goes on having a conversation with this woman. And he tells her, you know, the water that I have, you'll never be thirsty again. The water that I have is different. The water that I have will refresh you. The water that I have will fill you. And you wouldn't have to keep coming uh, back to this well. And so she's excited because, again, she's looking, but she's not really seeing. She's, she's hearing, but she's really not understanding that Jesus is telling her something that's going to become such a big truth in her life that there is no way to move away from it. And so here she is uh, wanting this water. Of course, you want water that you won't ever get thirsty again. You want water that uh, you will never uh, have to go without you. You'll never uh, feel dried out and dirty. And uh, this would be a wonderful thing. So she says, Sir, give me this water. And now Jesus has an opportunity for her to really be seen, not just looked at. And he says, Go get your husband. And I can just imagine the look on her face. She, you see, she comes in the noonday sun, in the heat. To avoid those women who look at her all the time, who judge her, who probably say ugly, nasty things to her, call her all kinds of names. And then here is this man who just said that he's got this magical water uh, that she can receive. And he asked her to go find her husband. Because see, the reason why the women don't like her and judge her is because she's had five. And she's living with someone, a man that is not her husband at the present time. And so she's probably like, oh no, here we go. I have got to face this again. But the difference between Jesus and those women who just look at her 
is that Jesus is able to do something about her situation. He's able to see her, but first he wants her to see herself. So she has to admit, you know, I, I don't have a husband. She does like we do. She tries to skim by it and she says, uh, I, I don't have a husband. And he said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You've had five. And the person you're living with now is not your husband. And so I can only imagine how she must feel like, oh no, here we go. I'm going to get a good old sermon about this. I'm going to be told, like those women tell me all the time, that I'm of no account, that uh, there is something wrong with me. Because that has to be the way this woman feels. There is something wrong with me. I can't keep a husband. I'm, I'm, I'm reduced to living with someone just so I can make it. And don't you know there are people out there around us who surround us all the time who still have that problem. They think that because their relationships have not worked out, that they're not worthy of a relationship. They, they cannot understand that. Uh, they, they can't understand that they're being looked at, but they're not really being seen. And the only person that can really see them deep within, see them in reality, is Jesus. So that's one of our assignments as Christians is that for those people who can't see, who only, who only look at themselves and who only look at others, we need to tell them that Jesus is able to do more than look. That he sees beyond the dress. He sees beyond the looks. He sees beyond the circumstances. He sees not just who you are, but he sees who God wants you to be. And so, as this woman is processing all of this, she says, I, I know, I, I know you must be a prophet, because how would you know all the things that are going on with me? He, she says, you must, you must be a prophet, and uh, are you greater than uh, the prophets who have come before? Because, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you, you want to move around the real issue, because you don't want to talk about it. And so uh, she tries to change the subject, and then she even changes the subject finally to where we're supposed to worship, and uh, that is not what Jesus is exactly trying to get her to see at that point. He wants her to see who she is, but he also wants her to see who she can be, who God intends for her to be. Now, being childless at this time, at this point uh, in New Testament, uh, history uh, was a, almost like a curse and I think and this is just me because the scripture really doesn't tell us but I can assume make a good assumption that she has had five husbands because she's unable to have children and when your wife in these times uh, couldn't have a child then you could easily divorce her just like that and move on to somebody who can, who you hope can. And so here is this woman uh, who probably doesn't have any children and has had all these husbands and finally probably just gave up and said, just forget it. And so I'll just stay with this man because I need some support. I need some financial support. She may not have had any family or she could have had family and they were ashamed of her because she couldn't have children. So Jesus was able to see inside of her and to see beyond the circumstances she was in and he told her that there is life to be had but first she had to uh, confess who she was and what she was doing but she also had to recognize who Jesus was that he's more than a prophet that he is greater than all of the prophets and he is greater than uh, all of the patriarchs. He's greater than anyone has ever been before. And he, through this conversation and being able to see her, not just look, but see her, then he is able to have her to uh, go in boldness to spread the good news. As a matter of fact, this woman... And I'm not saying it just because I am a woman, but uh, she, this woman was probably one of the first evangelists because she goes, she, she leaves that water pot there. 
that, that water pot that probably represents to her uh, pain and suffering and misunderstanding. And so she leaves the old her there and takes the new her to tell everybody she comes into contact with. I, I have met this man, Jesus, and he is. He's more than a prophet. He told me who I was. And the Bible doesn't say this. Scripture doesn't say this. But I believe that she probably added to that. And he has allowed me to be seen. He has allowed me to uh, be able to see beyond who I have been and that I am worthy and that uh, I am capable of, of being a woman who uh, deserves honor and who deserves respect. That's what seeing someone is all about. We can look on the outside and make all of our assumptions about uh, who we think people are and, and what they've done and what they will do. But we need to look beyond that and actually see, see the pain. Sometimes if we really look, if we really see people, we see the pain without them saying a word. We see the situation uh, without making judgments. We see who God intends for them to be because that's what it's all about. Seeing people for who they really are is that we see them as God sees them. That they are people who are able to, um, uh, that God loves and that God can use and that God will use. One of my favorite stories, I might have told you this before, um, but when Moses is on uh, the mountain receiving the law, guess where Aaron is? Now God is telling Moses, Aaron is going to be the high priest. But guess where Aaron is? Aaron is down at the foot of the mountain making an idol. That's the high priest? Uh-huh. Because God intends for him to be. And God is not looking at what he's doing now and who he is. And maybe I shouldn't put it that way because God sees everything. And he does judge us for uh, our sin, but he is so merciful and forgiving that he knows Aaron is the one and that Aaron can do better and be better. So here's Aaron making a bow and calf for them to worship instead of God, and yet God did not change his mind. He, he didn't say, wait a minute, Moses, before you go back down that mountain, because they down there showing out, get down there to them. Before you go, let me tell you something about it. I changed my mind. Let me, let me scratch that out, that he's going to be the high priest. God didn't do that, because God could see Aaron, not just look at what he was doing. And the good news for us is this. He doesn't just look at us and what we're doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But what he does is he sees who we are, but he also sees who he knows we can be. And that should always give us hope. And that should always teach us that we don't let go of people. We don't condemn people. We don't put people down. We meet them where they are, because that's what God did for us. He met us where we are, where we were, and then he continued to work and grow us into the people that he wants us to be. So let's not be so superficial that we just look and are not really seen, because God doesn't treat us that way. He looks at us. He sees us. He sees the beauty in us. He sees the ugliness in us. But he sees the love and it feels and experiences the love that he has for us. And he's not just a God of the past. He's not just a God of the present, but he's a God of the future. So he sees who he knows we are going to be. Amen? Amen. 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 And so now we're going to sing a hymn of commitment, a charge to keep our hand, because um, we do have a charge from the Lord. We have a charge to, to see people as he sees them. We have a charge to love people as he loves them. And so we 
before we sing this, as we are celebrating Valentine's, I, I didn't say too much about it. And by the way, Lily gave me my chocolate, so I have some chocolate for Valentine's Day. Uh, but we concentrate on the uh, Eros love, usually, you know. Uh, little, little, even little kids, when they're giving Valentine, if they're like me, my best friends, I picked out the, I would pick out the cutest Valentine in the box to give to my best friends, and uh, it, that's kind of the way we are. But uh, when Valentine comes, the love is not just about the kissy face love, the puppy love, but love is also about how God loves us. And Saint Valentine was a real person, a real man, and so uh, it is about us. Loving unconditionally, and so that's what I would like to, to remind you of. I know I think last year, one year, Reverend Hong uh, made sure all the men said something sweet to uh, their wives. Don't worry, I'm not going to force you to do that in public, but uh, I do want you to think on Valentine's of how we uh, should love one another and the things that we can do to actually show love because. Love is a noun, yeah, but love is also a verb uh, that we are to, to love others. So we're going to stand now and sing uh, number 413, A Charge to Keep I Have. Thank you. 